Bro, are you guys all right over there? Why is this a trend? The Lion King is obviously an iconic piece of media, but you didn't need me to tell you that. It's so good, it got like 15 remasters. It went gold, it went platinum, it went iron, diamond, redstone, bedrock. <laughs> it created one of the most iconic death scenes in all of media, and personally, I love going back and re-watching all these older movies like 10 years into the future and just seeing how I see different perspectives, how, uh, how it's changed with me. And we're gonna dive right into that because I, I, I think this movie is still good. I just have different like ways of seeing it now. This is the 32nd animated film Disney has made and I could be wrong, but I think this is the most iconic um, animation in their dialogue, in their catalog, what the fuck? And it really showcases how long they've been doing this. They've been doing this for like um, 30, 40 years now. And the mid, the 80s is when they really started to like hone on their craft and start trying more vibrant colors, more creative shots. And The Lion King was inevitable. It was a canon event. This was released in 1994 and it's still beautiful to this day. I get it's been remastered multiple times, but even then you would still be able to see like how much um it aged but genuinely i don't think this film is aged at all it's beautiful it's timeless almost every single frame of this movie is spectacular and it definitely shows how influential it's been on the community the artist community animation community their use of color throughout the movie is absolutely impeccable the shading the vibrant colors and the more joyous and uh very like flamboyant scenes <laughs> i don't know why i said flamboyant using a sunset to showcase these very violent blends of red that Simba has when he's running away from the hyenas I think is absolutely masterful and also just the the cool blends the cool like blues and greens um in the jungle when Simba goes to meet Timon and Pumbaa I think it's like relaxing just a lot of this is just beautifully masterfully made anyway enough about the animation let's talk about the story and i actually think this is a good story i'm not gonna lie the movie starts out with this very boombastic very loud sunrise as a person is singing in the background and then they start singing about the circle of life which is basically it sets the mood of the whole film it's a order almost of animals giving them purpose what the circle of life is in this movie is that everybody basically has a purpose um the lions kill the zebra and then you know the lines die and they turn into the grass and then it's like a little circle of life if i was looking at it very objectively and eh. I could say a lot of things about it. The lions rule all over the land and their throne is pride rock. And um, they say everything the light touches is their kingdom. And if, if I was looking, if I was, if they were human, I'd be like, wow, this, this is kind of fucked up. But like, nah, in general, it's just like, I don't know, natural selection. It's just like animals, animals being animals. If they were human, this monarch would very much be a problem because, you know, everybody's serving him, everybody like all the all the herbivores all these zebras and everything like that they they basically die while serving him because like they're food for them and I don't know, it's kind of fucked up if you think about it in a human perspective. Anyway, talking about the animals again, all the animals are basically respected, even if, you know, they die. <laughs> um, They're respected except for the hyenas. I forgot to say that. And it's very interesting because... The hyenas kind of got outcasted for no real reason, as far as I'm aware. We don't actually get the motive of why these hyenas are actually banished, and I'm guessing it's just because they're another carnivore. That's the only thing I can, like, reason with. Okay, I think the movie does showcase a little bit of classism, because these hyenas outnumber, they greatly outnumber these lions. But at the end of the day, the lions are still in power because, you know, they've, they've just been there for so long and nobody really contests it. Nobody questions it. And speaking of the lions, Mufasa is their leader. And Mufasa's relationship with his son Simba, I think it's very wholesome. Like, uh, it, it's very, they're, they're bonding a lot. Mufasa's trying to teach their kid, like, some very good lessons and talk about, like, life. 
how everything works i think it's i think it's pretty cute he spoils simba and you know that sometimes led to simba's detriment because he ends up in an elephant graveyard to where these hyenas almost kill him and mufasa had to step in simba's obviously the main protagonist of this movie and the antagonist is uh you know scar uh mufasa's brother who wants heir of the throne and it's they're like scar is a very interesting character Scar is a great villain in this movie but i can't help but feel they dumbed down him a little bit and i feel like the impact of his actions would have been way stronger if he didn't announce it at the very beginning when we meet scar we can sort of tell he's the outcast he's supposed to be like this sort of villain character and um he doesn't like mufasa he doesn't like simba and i think if they would have kept that going but never said anything about m killing Mufasa, killing Simba, I think Mufasa's death would have been so fucking strong. Don't get me wrong, Mufasa's death is actually very iconic and very emotional. Like, it's very traumatizing to Simba. But at the same time, like, us as audience, I feel if we didn't know, M like, uh, Scar was gonna do that in any sense, that would have been super impactful. Gar's song that he sings is basically saying, prepare for the death of the king. And us as audience members, like, I don't know, I feel like that's less impactful now that I know that Scar is gonna kill Mufasa, like, it's basically just preparing us for what's gonna happen so we can be less emotionally invested into Mufasa as a character, or Simba, because, you know, they're probably gonna die, or they will die, obviously. When Mufasa actually does die by Scar's hand when he's trying to climb up this mountain in order to escape these, uh, this stampede, it's like... They almost had a home run. If they would have cut out the whole be prepared section, I think that would have been a home run. Most iconic. Number one iconic death in uh, film history. It would have been so jarring, so left field, and also just like enhance the emotions we feel when Mufasa dies and Simba goes down and checks like, my father is dead and I am the cause. Speaking of Mufasa's death, does no one really realize how fucked up this is that Simba goes down and sees his father dead? How traumatizing that is? And also how he thinks it's his fault? Like, it's no wonder Simba doesn't want to go back to the Pride Lands when he actually escapes the hyenas after being chased and he's just raised in the jungle in a more peaceful, relaxing environment because it's traumatizing and he's not ready to deal with that shit yet. Thor gaslight Simba into thinking Simba is the cause of Mufasa's death. And as someone who's been gaslit into thinking, you know, my their mother, their parent died because of them, like, it's fu it fucks you up in a way you definitely need therapy for. I mean, hell, when we meet Timon and Puma for the first time, Simba is lying in the desert, literally wanting to die. Like, I don't know, this kid is fucked up. And it's something I would have never realized as a kid. I wouldn't have thought anything of it, but I sure as hell realize it now when I'm an adult and I've gone through scenarios like this. I'm surprised Simba's even trusting of anyone, but honestly, he's a kid. He has a lot more room to grow, so it makes sense. Speaking of Timon and Puma, they are one of the best gay couples ever, and uh, they are super supportive of Simba. Even, even when he goes to fight Scar at the end, they are super supportive of him. They are following following him through and through. Like, that is the best gay parents ever created. <laughs> and if you don't think they're gay, tell me why Timon is patting Pumbaa's asshole. Also, sorry for going back, but I actually want to just emphasize Mufasa's death. They show a full-on dead body. A full-on dead body. Like some Logan Paul shit. And I think that's extremely impactful because I don't think Disney has really done that before. And I don't think any animation company has ever done that before. This is like the first time. In Bambi, they didn't really show the mother getting killed. They implied it. Same with Fox and the Helm when they implied uh, Todd's mother gets killed. You can very much tell they were going for extreme shock value and extreme like cultural impact with this one anyway back to it since i'm basically at the point to where uh simba's about to grow up and uh, reclaim his throne i would love to talk about the music the music here is beyond phenomenal i'd usually show parts of songs i really enjoy in this segment but um you know disney remastered this so their their copyright's gonna be up my ass so i'm just gonna sing it okay Kuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. 
Hakuna Matata. I actually don't know the lyric. <laughs> I'm gonna be a mighty king, so enemies beware. Well, I've never seen a king or beast with quite so little hair. I'm gonna be the main event, like no king was before. I'm brushing up, I'm looking down, I'm working on my roar. <laughs> Can you feel the love tonight? Anyway, yeah, I enjoy the music. This music is what I really enjoy from animated films. I know animated films have like took a step away from being a musical, and I'm sort of fine with that. But like at the same time, I'm kind of not. I kind of miss this sort of theatrical, th sort of like musical theater type shit. I, I love it personally. Back to the story. Simba basically grows up under Timon and Pumbaa's wing. Uh, they meet Nala, Nala goes to find some help and ends up finding Simba, and then they end up trying to fuck each other, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's a Disney movie, you can't really do that. They didn't fuck, now Simba's mad, and he goes off to try and find why he's feeling this way, because, you know, he's, uh, he's talking about being a failure, he's reliving his past, he's, uh, he's just trying to get more of an understanding of himself, and he ends up meeting Rafiki, and Rafiki basically just, like, knocks some sense into him, like, some few basic words, which, you know, sometimes that's all you need in order to, like, get yourself going, and then, uh, Simba goes back to fight for the Pride Lands, fight Scar, in order to get stuff situated, and, uh, one thing I definitely want to point out is, when I was a kid i was just like why are the lions letting scar take over the lands with the hyenas why doesn't like <laughs> why don't the lions fight back against the hyenas and then um when i grew up i realized the hyenas are greatly outnumbering the lionesses so um little kid me was a, a genius at math but yeah simon goes back and fights scar and at first scar is trying to gaslight him again by saying you know did you tell your family that you killed your father and uh, simba ends up speaking it like yes it's true but um scar does something very excuse me it's very stupid at the end right before he's about to kill simba like simba's having like a, a breakdown he's just like he's reliving the past reliving uh, all these repressed memories of him killing mufasa and right before he like uh he's about to die scar is just like i'm the one who killed mufasa why do you say it like that i'm the one who killed mufasa and simba just springs in the action like simba's just fucking like pissed off obviously like if you wouldn't have said that, you would have been able to kill Simba, and you would have been able to destroy the Pride Lands. Like, why did you say that? A little bit of a stupid conclusion, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I th still think it's an amazing movie, a very phenomenal movie, and uh, I had almost no gripes of it, like, re-watching it. It was, it was very fun. One thing that doesn't really get answered is, where did the hyenas go? They just kind of fuck off for no reason when they still outnumbered the lions, but... Uh, I guess they really had no food or anything like that, so it makes sense. I guess they just left. But yeah, the movie closes with the circle of life again, and I honestly think that's beautiful because it's basically saying, you know, a king died, and it's showcasing how Simba replaced Mufasa, and how it, it's just gonna be a continuous circle of, you know, kings and queens, you know, monarchy, which we don't want. Yeah, I think there's so many different ways to, like, feel about this movie and about certain sections and uh, messages in this movie that I very much enjoy it because it's it's, it's a conversation at the end of the day. And, you know, I, I enjoy that shit. I enjoy different perspectives. I enjoy something that makes me look, makes me uh, think differently, like, as time goes on. Music's amazing. Animation very well keeps up. Um, story, I think the story is actually pretty good i'm gonna give this movie i'm gonna give it an eight anyway that's all i have to say i actually very much enjoyed talking about this movie as i showed very little clips and you know i was just having a very good time how's it going pups it's a canine and i'm 